Hi everyone, Ellie here from Balance Rider and just want to um, talk to you today, today and just build on um, the video that I put out uh, the last couple of days <coughs> Excuse me, about um, back pain and um, the, the medical terminal dosis which is what I call is a banana back where you're sort of pushing, your back sort of scrunches in, your bottom pushes out and you end up with your belly forwards and, and back pain right in your sort of low, low back, mid to low back area um, and what, what, what causes that, if you'll see um, my last video, I talked about how the hip flexors um, get overstrong because we sit in a, um, a sitting position all the time when we're working um, with the legs pulled up into your chest um, and we tend to shorten the hip flexors to ride because your stirrups are, are shorter and your legs, um, your legs are sort of bent. So you're constantly shortening the hip flexor which has the effect of pulling the pelvis forward and down and creating this big uh, curve in your back if you don't stretch them out. So um, what we focus on here at Balance Rider is balance. So we look at over tight muscles and lengthening them out and, uh, and, and then weak muscles, which would be conversely the opposite ones. So your core would be weak if your hip flexors are tight because your pelvis is pulling down and stretching all of your core. Your low back is tight because it's being shortened and pulled in. Your glutes or part of your glutes, because you have several muscles here, are going to be weak because again they're being pulled rather than strengthened and squeezed. Your hands will be weak and your quads will be strong. So by keeping all those muscles unbalanced and not at a, a, a relative length, you pull the body out of balance and by doing that then you create a poor posture because as some things get stronger, they pull forward and forward and forward and get further and further and further down and stronger and these get weaker. So um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, lordosis and your back and, and what sort of happens because essentially this is a hollow back, yeah? So we talk about um, our horses having a hollow back um, and I really want to get you to understand in a bit more detail what goes on with a hollow back in both you and your horse so you can take some steps to correct it because I'm passionate about giving you guys education so that you can look for the right places to get fixed. Um, it doesn't matter if um, you come to me, it doesn't matter if you go to a physio or an osteo or a, a, a chiropractor, as long as you get the right access to the information you need um, and you can help fix yourselves and keep you and your horses going. So to me that's important. So what I wanna do is to talk to you about the hollow back. So with your back you've got lots and lots of vertebrae, we know this. Um, and they generally sit sort of in, a, in an open position and, and while they're open sort of like this they can flex and move and go up and down and side to side and move in, in nice ways but if you hollow your back you'll see that the spine has to um, shorten and crunch together yeah and if you try and do this exercise with me where you hollow your back stick your bottom out you can't actually turn your upper body at all because your back is locked into place that it's not able to flex laterally um, at all. So you, you just can't move. Um, and as well as back pain and the muscles shortening around there, it's actually very, very uncomfortable everywhere else as well. So uh, by strengthening the core, you actually learn to lift your back. And when you lift your back, you separate the vertebrae, which gives some space to move. So you can actually turn and I'm exaggerating the movement, but by lifting your back, by pulling your core in and opening your back, you're actually giving yourself much, much more room to move, which is the way it should be. So to do that, how do you do that? Obviously we want to put our body into balance, but I did mention how the core will be stretched and weak. And for us, we really need to be able to squeeze the core in, because as we bring the core in and lift the back, engage the abdominals, it actually lifts the back for us and gives us a flat back, which allows us to move. If our backs are bent and curved, we're gonna, um, we're gonna be harder on our horses because we're gonna be stiff. And stiff means more impact down on the horse's back. So what does the horse do to absorb the impact? He has to brace too. So the bracing of our backs actually braces the horse's back and gives him a hollow back too. And if you imagine, we talked about how when we hollow our backs, we can't move laterally. The same is for the horse. So if we come into this position, which is where we would be if the horse was, if you were a horse, you would bend your back down to brace against the rider and then the head would come up because you're hollowing and bracing. And as soon as your head comes up and the back comes down, you cannot turn with effectiveness. So 
So what you'll find is horses that are hollow just cannot come around your leg. They cannot bend around your leg because they are unable to physically do it and they are not consistent in the contact. They cannot drop their head because their back is hollow and it will not allow them to. So we have to do the same thing with the horses. Engage the stomach muscles, lift the back to allow the head to stretch forward and down and to give them a more consistent contact. So it's more important than you realize to be able to make sure that your back is soft and strong and your abdominals are engaged because that affects your horse and then that affects your riding. So crucially important that you as a team uh, make sure that you as the rider get yourself sorted if you're experiencing back issues and stiffness to help your horse and I always do say that whatever you do with one uh, part of the team do with your horse do with yourself too so you have a chiropractic session get one done for you you have a massage for you get one done for your horse and um, it's really really important you, you, it is an extra expense it is something that necessarily you don't want to have to spend out but in the long run you're protecting yourself you're investing in yourself keeping yourself uh, moving and healthy which is going to keep your horse moving and healthy and it's going to keep you both being able to ride um, I can't emphasize the importance of that so I hope that helped you today um, I will put some more um, educational videos up if you have any questions please do ask me Elliot Balance Rider you can just pop me a message on the Facebook page otherwise I will see you soon have a great day